I got something very special for you, beautiful ladies. I'm going to uh, give you a quick guide to EQing high-end guitars. Recently I got asked um, if I could do a video about EQing guitars. And um, I did a couple of uh, videos about that topic because uh, it's very uh, important, in my opinion, to know uh, how to use an EQ. Although, um, if you got a modeling unit like the XFX, uh, which I'm using now for this video, uh, where the amp models and cabs, they sound really nice at stock settings, um, yeah, it's very helpful to know um, the, uh, the effect of different frequencies uh, if you would like to get your favorite guitar tone. And especially with uh, cheaper modeling units uh, where the IR quality and amp quality is not always so that it's usable uh, at stock settings. Yeah, you have to know how to use your EQ. And first of all, I, I'd like to address that I'm selling uh, preset packs um, for all of these units, you know, um, with mostly high gain tones, but also a couple of clean and crunch tones. And there are EQ settings, which I tailor especially to the, uh, to the modeling units. So if you're interested in these, um, they're quite affordable. Please uh, contact me on Facebook, link is in the description below. And uh, so we have the editor here. And um, currently I'm playing uh, one of the presets come with my preset pack but I tried out the new Dynacap feature please check out my video about that and, that. and uh, what is very important um, if you are talking about EQing is that it's um, very important where you put the EQ for example, here we have an EQ which is in front of the amp. So these are the effects here in the row which are um, before the amp and these are the effects after the amp. So here we have an EQ which is in front of the amp and it's currently bypassed. But what this does is usually um, I'm using it as a boost. So you can cut the highs and boost some mids here like a tube screamer would do. For example, here around the 850 hertz, so um, maybe you should is a wide range then you can get more saturation out of your amp it doesn't um, change the tone that drastically here it's just more saturated that is something which I would call pre-gain equalization um, but I will not talk about that um, I made a couple of videos about that so please check them out if you're interested in that today I would like to focus on uh, EQing um, after the amp or in this case we have an EQ which is located after the distortion stage in the amp block and um, yeah let's turn off these dynamic things here so these faders here will go up uh, following your pitch but I don't need it for that um, video so everything flat and um, First of all, uh, I would give you a brief overview about the frequencies. So for me, the guitar is an instrument that lives more or less in the mid-range. The mid-range for me is something in between 100 hertz and maybe 5 or 6k. So that would be the frequency range which I'd like to address. It could also be 80 hertz and maybe 6.4k, but it's some, somewhere around these frequencies. That said, um, the character of the uh, guitar tone is is uh, yeah more or less uh, maybe within the one 100 hertz and the uh, maybe the three k. Everything above that is maybe sizzle, which you can use to cut through the mix. So first of all, we will focus on this section here, the three k and 100 hertz. You have different EQs. This is an easy one, which is a graphic EQ. That means it has fixed uh, frequencies bands here which are addressed and um, there's another type of EQ which is called the parametric EQ which I was using here. Here you can choose which frequency bands you are addressing uh, with each uh, gain knob 
and also how uh, Q seems to work not quite well here okay and also um, which uh, which peak it, it has or uh, which uh, the amount of the peak here with the Q section so if it's a very um, it's just addressing this frequency or also the frequencies uh, which are a little bit in the neighborhood of that frequency but um, of course these things are a little bit more difficult to use here we have the graphic uh, interface but uh, sometimes you have only these knobs here the typically the frequency and the Q which you can adjust and also the gain which is basically um, what you're doing um, with the fader and the graphic EQ so we have here the 100 Hz which is basically the bass frequencies of the guitar <laughs> You can use these to fatten up your tone. I don't know if you can hear it um, because your speakers they have to um, well go very far down to that you can hear but um, in a live situation yeah you could use this. It doesn't um, change the overall guitar tone that much just adding bass, this booniness, as I like to call it. If you're using that, um, a little trick is you can compensate this booniness with uh, raising some of the 3K. But I wouldn't go that far up uh, with these um, EQs, usually. I use them to fine tune and uh, usually I'm within the maybe 2 or 3 dB up or down anyway so this is the basically these are the bass frequencies the uh, 200 Hertz are the lower mids which can get a little bit annoying um, but also <coughs> Some amps, like Mesa rectifiers, for example, they have a lot of these frequencies. You can also use these frequencies to uh, fatten up your tone. But uh, typically, um, they they are causing a little bit of um, trouble in the mix, so they're not that helpful. The 400 hertz is something which is very important uh, for the pitch of the note. Can get boxy. It's also in the lower mid range. Uh, but uh, for leads, if you would like to hear the, the pitch of the note a little bit more, maybe you can raise these frequencies. Usually in a mix, these frequencies here, um, for me these are more or less the, uh, the snare frequencies. You can get a fat snare drum sound. So they are not that important for guitar, but uh, yeah, the 400 hertz is something which I use on lead tones, uh, on leads a lot, um, when, especially when playing highs. In fact, in the XFX, I set this dynamically, uh, so if I'm playing higher notes, they go up. Anyway, um, the 800 hertz, um, there we come into the honkiness region. Usually, um, they can get a little bit in the way. Especially if you're boosting the amp with the Tube Screamer. Uh, the Tube Screamer is usually uh, yeah, boosting in that region. And then uh, with the EQ after the tone stack, maybe you can remove a lot of the honkiness that's coming from the Tube Screamer. And um, then you have uh, these upper mids which are a little bit more helpful, I think. Yeah, this is uh, 
around the uh, 2K or 1.6. It's more or less the punch of the, uh, of the note. So if you are uh, playing like this, uh, a riff-oriented Megadeth music, they're using a lot of these frequencies, I think. But keep in mind, um, they can also get annoying because, um, well, you have a lot of these uh, percussive elements then. Which is maybe good for rhythms, but uh, you don't have that much pitch then pitch of the note. So this may be, um, if you would co compare or uh, if you would relate this to amp characteristics, this is more or less something which British amps, ha ha amps have, uh, the Marshallish uh, amps, as the uh, American amps there are a little bit more scooped in this region. <laughs> And then you have the 3K uh, which is giving you a little bit edge. Of course also punch of the note but um, it's uh, similar like here with the 100 uh, or the 200 um, hertz fader uh, it's not um, getting in the way or uh, adding too much uh, percussive noise as I would call it so uh, in other words it doesn't affect the uh, characteristics of the tone that much if you would raise these two here <laughs> You get more definition here with this and also um, that it stays fat you can raise these 200 or 100 hertz. But if you do the same with maybe the 400 and the 1.6 you will get a totally different tone which is muddy in the midst. So if your tone is maybe too muddy in the mids, you should address this range here. With this EQ it's maybe the 400 until 1.6k. Reduce it a little bit. If you have uh, some which is too scooped for your taste, then maybe these three should go up a little bit. And if you would like to have a little bit more edge in the if you like the overall tone already, but you would like to have a little bit more, maybe, edge when playing uh, riffs, you can use the 3K, compensate that here a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that's it basically. These frequencies here, 6K and the 100 Hertz, maybe you should be careful in a live situation, because uh, usually they are not that helpful loud volumes, at least with distorted tones. So I'd rather dial them back than um, raising these. We can also choose uh, an 8-band uh, EQ here, um, which has slightly different uh, bands, maybe a little bit more flexible. The thing is, uh, the EQ you're choosing, um, it has to to fit, of course, to the uh, to the tone stack of the amp. Some amps, maybe they tend to uh, have the mids located around 500 hertz, like maybe the PVs. Some, like the Marshalls, around the 600 hertz. So you have to find out which uh, is working for you. And anyway, basically the same things which I explained with the seven band EQ can be applied here. So these frequencies here. Um, 2K and 4K, they're maybe for these this edge effect. As you don't have the 3K here, yeah, then maybe the uh, the 4K is more or less something you would you would raise to cut through a mix a little bit. 
Compensate this, this, as I said here, by raising these frequencies. If you would like uh, to have more mids, then yeah, maybe you can use these three things here. <laughs> Well, this is more or less boxiness. Um, around the 500 hertz, it's more or less the boxiness region. If your sound is too boxy, remove these frequencies. I'd re remove the 400 hertz, but here you have these two faders. If your sound is too honky, remove the 1K in this case, maybe a little bit of the 500 hertz, usually. I would remove the 800 hertz. That is the honkiness region. Um, yeah. And here you have this percussive region. Around the 2 or 3k for riffs, um, which is not that helpful for leads. Yeah. And 4k. Yeah, just for cutting through the mix. So uh, yeah, for for my tone here, which I um, which I dialed in, I would choose the uh, seven band EQ. Of course, you have a couple of other EQs here. For example, the Mason March series. It's addressing totally different frequencies. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's actually addressing these frequencies, which are uh, marked here. But anyway, it works great with any amp. I think. It's a little bit easier to dial in because here you have basically the mids and um, you may know that our people are dialing in a drastic V shape with Mesa Max series amp but if I do this with this amp with the uh, Atomica it's way too scooped the thing with the Max series amps is um, they are very mid-focused and uh, the bass middle treble uh, equalization is located in front of the distortion stage. So it's not used for tone shaping, it's just for boosting more or less. So um, you have to use this EQ just for your tone shaping. Unlike with this amp here, the uh, Atomica, which is basically a Marshall, hot rod and Marshall, Marshallish amp, Bass, middle, and treble is located after the distortion stage and it's used for tone shaping. Anyway, but this is also very flexible and um, yeah, here you have the, the punch and here yeah, you have your mids, here you have the fatness and of course here the bass. The thing with that is, um, it is somehow maybe a boosting or addressing a wider range of frequencies, so you don't creating these spikes which result in uh, honkiness or yeah, boxiness, as I like to call it. There are very uh, big differences though between the EQs, but um, even if they address the same frequencies. The XFX comes with, well, very high quality EQs, I must say. <laughs> to be honest, they are the best EQs which I know in modeling units. <laughs> That's also nice. Usually these EQs, they have their, their own characteristic. But, um, yeah. If you want a neutral one, I'd recommend here the 7-band EQs or the 8-band EQs. With the 7-band, I got the best results um, with my tones, uh, which are more or less based on the uh, on the Atomica High. Maybe I can show you one uh, other pad from my preset pack where I was using a uh, Mark Series amp. <laughs> And here you can see I'm using the Pfeiffer Mark EQ. 
The amp overall sounds very um, funky, very mid focused, as I said. And here you can see it's uh, I'm boosting the mids and the treble just for the saturation. And the same thing with uh, maybe here the uh, triaxis load tone. <laughs> These are uh, all sounds which come with my preset pack. Yeah, so I hope this helps you to, uh, to, yeah, to know how to use these, um, these EQs and the different frequencies. If you've got any questions, uh, please post them in the comment section below. Get my preset packs and check out my uh, EQ settings. Uh, yeah, otherwise, I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.